Hey everybody, oh this is going to be a fun one. Um, let me explain how I've got to this point. Many years ago, in the mystic days of my past on YouTube, uh, I made some silly videos. And one of those videos was called, um, I think it was like air to water cooling conversion the easy way. And it was a very sarcastic joke. And it was a video where I basically just said that you should spray the side of your engine with a water squirter and keep it hooked on your bars. It was funny, it had a lot of views, people liked it. Hey everybody, so as you know, most 125cc bikes are air-cooled. Um, um, you know, water-cooling is a really is a better option. But I've been looking into conversion kits, and they all seem pretty stupid. I mean, you have to change the head, you have to put a radiator on stuff. Well, I was thinking about it, and I found a really cheap and easy way to do a, uh, an air-to-water cooling conversion to the engine. So I'll just show you how it's done now. Give me a second. As you can see, it looks standard. There's no visible radiator. I mean, that's because there isn't one. You don't need a radiator if you want to have a water-cooled engine. All you need to do is spend about a pound, and you just get one of these, and you just, you see, you just do that. Look, it's steam coming off. It's taking the heat away. Water-cooled. It's more like a jewel thing. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, this is stupid. How can that work? You can only cool your engine while you've stayed still. Not true. Look, it's got a handle on it. Perfect. So you're going along and you're thinking, God, it's been getting a bit warm now. I think that engine's probably getting a bit overheated. You take your spray bottle and you just spray the shit out of the side of the engine. And you, you know, do the other side as well. You don't want to do it unevenly. Pop it back on your bars. You might think it's a bit of a stupid idea and everything, but it, it's dual purpose because, you know, if you're getting a bit hot, you just... Oh, yeah. Oh, so much better. Oh, the cooling... Just that coolingness, you know, on a hot day. Awesome. Oh, fuck. But there's this one thing in the comments that never goes away and it keeps cropping up every few weeks almost, or every few months. And that is, oh, that's great and everything, but wait till you crack your head. Because spraying a hot engine with cold water would cause it to crack. And, and I can understand the logic in that because metals put when they go through uh, snap temperature changes, you do have uneven shrinkage and you can get snapping, particularly in things like castings, I believe. Um, depends on how it's been called, I think. Don't know exactly. Whatever. The point is, rain. We don't see engines exploding um, and engines cracking to pieces because an engine gets wet from rain. And then you're like, well, yeah, but it's, it's non-direct, maybe. Um, well, what about when you ride like a, an enduro or a, a dual sport through a river? I know many people who have ridden bikes through rivers and swamps. How I do miss motor tripping. So now we are here. This is that very same head. Um, I happen to have a scrap pile and there is some bits of Betty's engine still there. I'm not sure if this is engine mark one or engine mark two, but it's one of them. Um, and what I'm basically going to do is I'm going to put it in a fire and I'm going to burn that fire until it's as hot as I can possibly get this, which I'm pretty sure is going to be hotter than it's ever going to get um, on the bike. And then I'm going to dunk it into a bucket of water. If it doesn't crack, I think we can pretty safely say that no, that even though it was a joke, was never going to crack your head in the same way that rain doesn't crack your head. Now this is kind of pointless because there's no reason to be like, oh great, okay, I can go around squirting the side of my head then, because you don't need to, because it was a joke in the first place that they missed. But I feel like this needs to happen. Nigel, do you think this needs to see? Nigel is crying. You made Nigel cry. Leave a like for Nigel. Apologies if there's any wind noise, it's a bit windy today. Okay, so we've got the burn bin, got some nice dry logs, kindling, some newspaper to get that going. There's four of these, so it's going to be enough heat to uh, heat up that head. Incidentally, I think people are more referring to the barrel when they're talking about this rather than the head. Um, but I'm going to put both in. Uh, I know it's a lot more material to heat up, so we're probably not going to get such a high temperature, but I still think it's going to be high enough to be higher than if it's in, an engine, uh, in a running bike. So I've put a loop of metal on that so we can get it out easy. So that will go in there, and then when it's as hot as it can be, we're going to turn around and we're going to dump it in here, and we'll see what happens. Got a hose on, 
on standby should we have any problems but it's very lush around here and it's raining yesterday so I think we need to just get on with this. Okay, those logs have definitely caught. Okay, it's probably been about 15 minutes and as you can see this is burning really nicely. It's nicely supported up in the air so it's getting lots of heat under it. I'm trying not to melt the camera. Yeah. And uh, the powder coat's gone now. Okay, so it's been about half an hour, 40 minutes. There is no way an engine is ever going to get this hot unless the bike's on fire. Here we go. Okay, so there you go. Let's see what happened. It's completely cold. It dumped all of this heat very, very quickly. It's taken the powder coat off absolutely beautifully and this is from a very cheap Chinese bike from about 10 years ago so people say about Chinese bikes being the most terribly built things of Chinese pot metal and all these different things so this should be the worst case scenario if this was going to crack that should have just happened. The head, again, I mean, the edges are still sharp. You can tell that they're not warped in the slightest. If I just gave that a bit of a clean up with a wire wheel, okay, forget the rust, you wouldn't know that I'd put that in a fire and then quenched it. So, no, I think I can safely say now that spraying your engine with a water squirter is not going to crack it. Unless it already had a crack from the casting, if it was a bad casting and it was prone to that, that was going to crack someday anyway. I think a good casting won't crack if you sprayed it with water, if it rained on it, if you rode it into a river. Um, I'm not suggesting you do anything with this information in the sense of, oh, well, now I can just, you know, spray my bike off as soon as I get home when it's red hot. I don't do that myself because, you know, you just just don't do that. Don't put uh, temperature changes into it that are that high. Uh, let it cool down a bit. But the idea that my joke video of doing this was going to lead to someone cracking their engine is just preposterous. And I hopefully think that it has now been put to bed. Yes, I do think that if I got 100 engines of different ages and stuff and I did this, I might get one of them crack, maybe. But, as I say, this is supposed to be the worst case scenario, right? If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. Thanks to these people who support me through Patreon. Uh, I'm also a metal artist. It makes clocks and things out of uh, old motorcycle parts. And I'm now thinking that, well, this will become a clock. It's from Betty, anyway. It's now got the powder coat taken off of it, which is something I would have needed to have done. And, well... That was easy, and I think it'll make a nice little carriage clock. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. Now I wonder how are they going to say I did this wrong. If you enjoyed this video and the other content on the channel, please consider following the links in the description to show your support.